Good afternoon, everyone. I see we have a quorum. Councilwoman, real quick, yeah. let me start if you don't mind. I have a um, four o'clock with the Ravens and PCs of people to go over Cecil Elementary School at four. I'm not trying to rush, so if you see me step off a little early, that's the reason why. I'll oh, I think I think we'll be finished by then. We have three. Okay, uh, three just want to give you a heads up. That's all. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, welcome everyone. I am Sharon Green Middleton, Vice President of the Council, representative of the 6th Council District, and I also serve as chairperson for the Economic and Community Development Committee. We are here this afternoon for the following bills. 21-0071, 21-0090, and 21-0100. The hearing for Bill 21-0083 has been canceled. Um, and I also would want to mention that I'm going to chair uh, the first bill, and then I have to um, leave for an urgent engagement that I have to attend. And uh, Chair Mark Conway is going to chair the remainder of the hearing for the final two uh, bills. So in attendance um, for the members of the committee, we have John Bullock, Councilman John Bullock. Thank you, Madam Chair. Councilman and Chair Mark Conway. Thank you, Madam Chair. Do I see Councilman Dorsey, not yet. Councilman Glover. Thank you, Madam Chair. Councilman Ramos. Thank you, Madam Chair. Councilman Stokes. I am here and you said Councilman Ramos. Oh, I'm so sorry, Councilwoman Ramos. <laughs> uh, do I see any other members present? Dorsey's here. Okay. Welcome, Councilman Dorsey. Okay, members of the president's office, we have Nikki Thompson, Director of Legislative Affairs. Thank you, Madam Chair. And I see Lucy Font, um, Staff Assistant for Legislative Affairs. Thank you, Madam Chair. And I see, I'm trying to, Go down the list here. Okay. And representing the mayor's office, I see Natasha Mihu, the director of governmental relations. Thank you, Madam Chair. And Nina Thimulus, the deputy director of government relations. Thank you, Madam Chair. Before we begin, I would like to remind you that if you're not speaking, please keep yourself on mute. Please do not take yourself off of mute unless you are recognized. When recognized, please identify yourself and the agency or organization that you represent. Once you have finished speaking, please put yourself back on mute. And let's begin with bill number 21-0071, the street encroachment of 1707 Eastern Avenue for the purpose of permitting subject to certain conditions, the construction and maintenance of a portion of a building projecting into the public right of way on the south side of Eastern Avenue on the property known as 1707 Eastern Avenue. This bill was introduced on May 3rd, 2021. Uh, the bill was sponsored by the council president at the request of the administration, um, specifically the Department of Transportation do committee members have any questions at this time? If not, we'll go ahead into the agency reports. Uh, and we'll start with the city solicitor's office. Hello, Madam Chair. This is Hillary Ruley from the city solicitor's office and we approve the bill for form and legal sufficiency. Thank you, Hillary. The Department of Transportation and um, I think that's Liam. 
Madam Chair, great to be here. Thank you so much. This is kind of a DOT committee hearing day. So we've got a few bills here. So we're really appreciative. So um, Liam, when you, as you're explaining, make, could you please explain the, go over the actual encroachment? Sure. Thank so, you. So um, yes, Liam Davis, uh, DOT with Baltimore City DOT. So what happened in this instance is, is a um, licensed surveyor, licensed Maryland surveyor went out uh, for the private property owner, uh, conducted a survey found that the um there was an extension a um, an encroachment on public right-of-way by uh, approximately 1.6 feet and that's extending into that um southern side of eastern avenue it is um within the this is the standard process this legislation is the standard process of encroachment is found between um between zero and four feet this is the standard process to kind of acknowledge the encroachment and work with DOT right of way division to ensure that um, that everything is accounted for properly. Um, so there is a, this legislation is necessary for a DOT to enter and um, you know, complete the right of entry agreement process and uh, execute the, in, the encroachment ordinance. So this, this is um, not, not too many, nothing extremely, uh, um, influential from this bill is to kind of to correct and acknowledge um, this encroachment on our records is essentially what this legislation does. Thank you. Any questions to Liam from the committee? Moving on to the Parking Authority of Baltimore City. Thank you, Madam Chair. Arco Sen from the Parking Authority, and we do not oppose the passage of the bill. Thank you. Board of Municipal Zoning Appeals. Madam Chair, Nina Themelis with the Mayor's Office of Government Relations. The BMZA stands by its report in uh, deferring to the Planning Department. Thank you. The Department of Housing and Community Development. Thank you, Madam Chair. Stephanie Murdoch, Legislative Liaison for the Department of Housing and Community Development. We stand by our bill report. We have no objection to the passage of this bill. Thank you. Department of Planning. Hey, good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the committee. Eric Tisek with the Department of Planning. We have no objection. Uh, we know that this is in a local CHAP district. If there should be any improvements to be made, just as an advisory, it would need further review from our CHAP staff. Okay, thank you. The Fire Department. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, Nina Themelis, Mayor's Office of Government Relations. I don't believe a member of the fire department staff is um, on this call, but they uh, stand by the report and have no objection to the passage of the bill. Thank you. Uh, do the committee members have any comments or questions for any of the city agencies? Madam Chair. Uh, is that Councilman Dorsey? Conway. Oh, I'm sorry, Conway, Councilman Conway. Sure, um, just nothing crazy. I'm just curious how this happens, uh, how we end up in this situation uh, to begin with, where we've got the encroachment and didn't know it. Sure, so a neighborhood, and this again, Liam Davis, Baltimore City DOT, um, when you look at some of the very historic areas of the city, like Fells Point, Jonestown, even parts of downtown, those were originally three separate towns and eventually became Baltimore uh, and Baltimore, as everyone knows, annexed land over there, you know, a couple centuries. Um, but particularly in these, these like historic uh, neighborhoods, um, this will be found from time to time where, you know, over the course of whether it was a hundred years ago, 50 years ago, 20 years ago, Every once in a while, you'll see where um, a private property has encroached on public right of way. When that happens, the general, um, what the city will do, what our right of way division will do generally is get fair market share for that kind of, um, for that kind of lost right of way space in the, in the agreement that is made with the, the property owner. But the long story short is, um, 
I'm not going to say it's common, but I would say it's more common in your neighborhoods where, um, like even like Federal Hill, where it was designed, like the neighborhood started developing before the city probably had a broad survey done. So sometimes we'll we'll find things that it's not it's not co super common, but every once in a while you'll find things that you didn't know were there in the records. Not to mention the city did lose a lot of records during the 1904 fire. So that also complicates things for the really old properties. Uh, thank you for, for explaining. Thank you, Madam Chair. You're welcome. Any other questions? Okay, the committee will announce. I'm sorry, Madam Chair. Yes, uh, Councilman Dorsey. Thank you. I'm I'm sorry, Liam. I'm trying to read the plat the the plans here. Can you just say one more time exactly where the encroachment is? I just don't understand it. Extending on the right of way. Um, it should be extending into the right of way. I have the plat up on the south side of uh, Broadway. Uh, immediately west of register, uh, there's on the plats that are labeled on the bill file, it should be labeled online 21-0071-1707 Eastern Avenue. It'll show, it shows you kind of how the property extends. I think that reads just over a foot. I don't understand because I'm looking at the plats. It's under the word Eastern. It's under the. Yeah, I see where the plats show Eastern Avenue. I don't really understand how where it's a, anything is encroaching into Broadway. Under E R N, there's an arrow. There's a little encroachment, a little block, on the diagram. I guess I'm not going to pretend to understand, but that's okay. <laughs> so we could, if if it, I, I could I, also have would, David. I, I would be interested to have somebody uh, after the hearing just help me Explain. read this plan a little bit better. David Fram is the expert on this, so okay. I'll make sure he gets a write, write up, and uh, I can share it with um, the chairwoman as well. Uh, All right, thank sure you. Maybe I could help. Sure, yeah, Eric, please. Go ahead, Eric. Uh, so I, if you're looking at the plat, uh, and I don't know if you happen to have it open um, because this is not a colored line, it makes it a little bit harder to read. So the face of the building on Eastern Avenue is slightly thicker and it has the boundary and distance that North 87, seven minutes, 25 seconds east for 33.18 feet. Uh -huh. uh, if you uh -huh. see that, that heavy line uh -huh. is the actual property boundary. The lighter line to the north of it is the one and a third feet into the right away. So the face of the building, like the, like a brick uh, and a foot thick, yeah. is actually outside of the front property boundary into the right away. I see. And, and to be truthful, it looks like the building to the east has the same problem. Yeah. Uh, maybe they already got covered, but that's what you're looking at. And then um, in on the right corner, the building is actually like a little inside. weird little alley thing yeah the building jogs in a little bit and there's like a little inlet between the two and the property boundaries in the middle of that little pedway between the two buildings so that's what you're looking at <laughs> that's just bizarre man it's old stuff that's yeah and I, I think eric uh can attest though that this type of thing these happen more so in the historic parts of the city and you have so more accurate measurement uh potential today i'm uh, led to understand by surveyors that you know our technology today is a lot more precise than it used to once be yeah and so we did we opt here to retain ownership of that right-of-way and allow them to encroach on it instead of making some agreement for a transfer of ownership of it to them so that's what's happening here I think um, you know keeps open the the possibility should the city ever need the right of way again. On law department, Hillary, did you want to? Can you explain more on this? 
care. I mean, you know, it's an option, right? So real property, the, um, the right of way is inalienable under the charter. So if you want to, you have to, you know, of course, close it and sell it like we do in the opening and closing bills. But there's no requirement that we do that. So we can do either. We can either keep it um, and, and do, you know, an agreement or right of entry or whatever or easement or whatever, or we can sell it. So it just, it's circumstantial. You have both options most times. And do we have a process by which we determine to go down one path versus the other when somebody approaches us or when we have something like this come before us? This just seems so bizarre. I, have, I, I can't imagine a scenario in which the city would ever need to retake use of these absolutely useless little pieces of property that already have a building on them. Yeah, I mean, I, I hear you and there, there is a process. So there there is a uh, part of our updating and reformatting for APA includes regulations and uh, public facing processes for um, these types of instances. So I think I think we will see that as the um, people there will be more uh, that'll be more transparent as we share the updated APA formatted uh, public facing rules. Um, Again, like it might may seem insignificant, but um, if I recall correctly, I could be wrong here. But, I mean, you never know because this is Eastern Avenue. If it was if it was a Fleet or Alisan, I forget which block it was where they were considering running the red line. Every inch is precious in terms of public right of way, so you just never know when you have a major project that might need that extra couple inches. Okay. okay. Thank you. Um, Councilman Dorsey, are you, is that enough or if um, you can? Sure, that's fine. On the side. Okay. Thank you, Eric, for walking me through the plan there. I appreciate it. Uh, <clears throat> the committee will now take public testimony if there's any and just a few instructions here. Um, computer users, please use the raise hand function. If you wish to testify when called upon, please state your name. Attendee, attendees who call in by phone will be unmuted one by one. Callers will hear two beeps when unmuted. If you do not wish to testify, please say so. If you do wish to testify, state your name. Do we have any raised hands? No. no. And are there any callers? So caller number two, you're being unmuted. Did you want to testify? Councilwoman, this is David Fram. Is this is this unmuted? Yes. Yes, David. Okay. Hi. Um, good afternoon, everyone. So I just want to clarify uh, the Honorable Councilman Dorsey's question and, and, and Eric, please correct me if I'm wrong. The building was the building had burned and the Department of Housing and Community Development had determined that the building was was and needed to be demolished. And in the demolition councilman, that's when the encroachment was identified. So the long story made short, the, the encroachment was there and we would not have been made aware of it, but for the unfortunate fire that caused the building to be um, totally rehabilitated. If we had demanded that the building be built within the property line, there would have been a gap that would have had to be filled in with something. So the cleanest way to proceed was to allow the encroachment to remain under the, the housing code and to allow the building to be put back in the same um, position or location where it was prior to the, prior to the burning, sir. That makes Thank total you. sense. I appreciate that explanation. Thank no, you. Th thank you. I, I could, I was jumping up and down until the honorable councilwoman Middleton let me come in <laughs> just to let you all know. Thanks everyone. Thank, 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 you. thank you for joining David. Thank, yeah, thank you. you. Uh, checking for any other callers. Scott Weaver. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, Chair. Did you want to testify on this bill, 21 0071? 
Uh, no, Madam Chair, this is about the right of way. Oh, okay. We haven't gotten there yet. Thank you. And that is it. Excuse me. Can we? Can you mute yourself, please? I love this song. Hello. Hello. Okay, we took care of that one. Is there a motion to move the bill? Move the bill favorable. Second. Second. Oh. Move the bill favorable by Dorsey. Who was the second? Conway. Conway. Councilman Conway. Um, move favorable. Chair Middleton, yes. Councilman Bullock? Yes. Yes. Councilman Conway? Yes. Yes. Councilman Dorsey. Can we get that music back so I can think about it for a minute before I cast my vote? <laughs> Councilman no, okay. Dorsey. <laughs> I'll just vote yes. It's okay. I'll jam out over here. Councilman Glover. <laughs> yes. Councilman Ramos. Yes. And Councilman Stokes. Yes, you called Councilwoman Ramos, Councilman. Councilman Ramos again. Stop it. Um, okay, this bill will move to second reader. And now I'm going to put it in the faithful hands of Chair Conway. Um, you're on, and I'm gone. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Um, all right, we'll move on to the next bill, Bill 21 0090. City streets closing, Edding Street, and four 10 foot alleys bounded by Druid Hill Avenue, Gold Street, Division Street, and Baker Street. For the purpose of condemning and closing Edding Street and, and four 10 foot alleys bounded by Druid Hill Avenue, Gold Street, Division Street, and Baker Street, as shown in a plat numbered 337A 28A and filed in the Office of the Department of Transportation and providing for a special effective date. This bill was introduced on June 8th, 2021, and it was sponsored by the council president at the request of the administration, um, specifically the Department of Transportation. Any questions from the committee members? All right, seeing no questions, uh, we'll hear from the agency representatives and we'll start off with the city solicitor's office. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair. This is Vic Turbler from the city uh, law department. Uh, my report uh, notes that we've got some uh, ancient references to DPW in this bill uh, and the Department of Transportation, I believe, is, is asking for amendments that, that DPW references that occur in Section 1, Section 4, and Section 5 be replaced with references to the Department of Transportation, which now basically oversees this particular project. So, uh, subject uh, to those amendments, then the law department is prepared to approve the bill for form and legal sufficiency. Excellent. Thank you, Vic. Uh, next up, we've got the Department of Planning. Good afternoon again, Mr. Chair, members of the uh, commission or committee. Uh, this uh, street closing request first came to the Planning Commission on November 13th of 2020 as part of their master planning authority, where they found that uh, the assembly of these properties, most of which were already owned by the city, uh, would, uh, upon completion of that assembly, render the, the street and the rights of way no longer necessary for a public purpose. Uh, they could be closed and the assembled properties would then be developed into a park. Um, then the bill itself was uh, referred back to the Planning Commission, um, which is routine, uh, on June 24th of this year, uh, where they uh, unanimously recommended approval. Excellent. Thank you, Eric. Uh, next, we've got the Department of Housing and Community Development. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Again, Stephanie Murdoch, Legislative Liaison for the Department of Housing and Community Development. We stand by our bill report in support of this legislation. Thank you, Stephanie. Next, we've got the Department of Transportation. Mr. Chair, Liam Davis, Baltimore City Department of Transportation. We stand by our bill report in support of Council Bill 21 0090. Um, this is necessary uh, for the creation of Cab Calloway Legends Park. So we are we are absolutely um, looking forward to seeing 
finished product uh, after um, the legislation moves forward and the park uh, comes to fruition. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Liam. Uh, and last but not least, the Baltimore Development Corporation. Do we have anybody online from BDC? Raven is in the chat. Hold on a moment. Okay. Raven Thompson from BDC states that uh, she stands by her department, her agency's report. All right. Thank you. And that was favorable. Um, any questions from committee members? Questions, comments? Mr. Chair, um, so the, the buildings that are around the, um, that are, because uh, when you look at the plat, the buildings are still there. So the buildings are gone. And uh, I don't know who this goes to, I guess, um, DOT, DOT or, DOT. yeah. Yeah, the most of the buildings around there are gone. Uh, if my memory serves me correctly. And I know Kaboom put in a a playground there years ago. Um, so that it already is kind of functioning as a kind of de facto park space. Uh, but I think these this legislation will kind of help us to do something more permanent there. But most of, most of the buildings on the property, the, is the parcel that's being consolidated, most of those buildings are gone. It's mostly green space now. And so just taking away the street just allows for basically no cars to be right there. So it's a better situation for the park, I guess. Yeah, think of it as like a, a square block right now, right? But in the middle of that block is an alley splitting it in half up the middle. So opening and closing allows that parcel to just be a solid green space parcel rather than two split up ones. Okay. That's, essentially, that's essentially what this is doing. Mm -hmm. Okay, I got it now. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. um, and then the law department referenced amendments. I don't see anything. Or is that within the bill that all the DOT, the DPW references are in our referenced DOT? Mm -hmm. So uh, the, I'm oh, sorry, you, those amendments are set in the report. Is that correct? Uh, the law department makes reference to those amendments in my report, but I thought transportation was offering the amendments. Yeah, I, and I apologize. I have, I have them from legislative reference. Um, it, they're, not is, in the, oh. they're not in the materials that we received ahead of time. Okay. So that is on me. I am not familiar with that amendment process. So I should have sent this to you guys before, but I'm I'm going to share this with um, Jennifer Coates now. These are technical amendments. And um, Victor, can you explain one more time uh, the nature of these amendments? I remember it has something to do with DPW and them being named. Right. They, uh, the, this is boilerplate language, uh, and that has been placed in all of all of these closing documents or these these bills when we have closings, and they refer to uh, Department of uh, Public Works rather than the Department of Transportation, uh, and that's because at one point closings were in DPW, and now they're in transportation. So these these amendments go to if you look at uh, section one, you'll see reference to uh, Department of Public Works. The same with uh, sections two, four, and five. So those the amendments are basically striking DPW and putting in DOT uh, in those locations. Got it, um, Liam. Can you you do have the um, the drafted amendments? They were just sent to you as well as Jennifer, I have Victor CC'd. And I apologize uh, in the future, this will get to Jennifer or the committee staff ahead of time. This is my, believe it or not, first time submitting amendments um, in my role as DOT legislative manager. All good, all good. There's a lot of first times here. Myself chairing this committee. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, um, I can uh, make um, Liam Davis the presenter and he can share them if you'd like. That would be great. 
And as I understand, this is a technical amendment. It, it boilerplate language. We see this frequently in bills where DPW once oversaw these responsibilities. So I. Understand the language clearly, um, and I think we should be able to move forward uh, with that. Uh, Liam, you're muted. Jennifer, I'm getting my PC logged in on this, so I will be right there. Okay, so there should be another Liam Davis on there with no, um, with no, no camera on, and I'll be able to share the screen once given permission. You have okay. permission. Great, thank you so much. All right, so here's the amendments. So simply on page one, line 18, you're striking public works, you're submitting transportation, Page three, striking, uh, strike beginning with public uh, in line 36 down through and including works in line 37. We're gonna substitute transportation on that page. Similar technical amendment on line 41. Uh, and amendment number two is on page three in line 22 after regulations insert a period. On that same page, strike beginning with adopted in line 22 through and including period in line 23. So it's really just updating to reflect um, that right-of-way division, which has bounced around, to be completely honest, from general services to DPW, and now it's at DOT, and we're keeping them. They're, they're, they found their home now. Good. Thank you, uh, Liam. Mr. Oh. Chair, if I could just make a comment on that. Uh, yes, please, Councilman Dorsey. Uh, before long... Um, one of the annual kind of routine corrective bills that comes to the council will, I guess, come up for a hearing at some point. Um, and I've asked for an amendment for that bill to uh, correct language in the existing code where there is some references to DGS regarding certain right, right of way issues. Um, and so we're looking to get that uh, that kind of stuff straightened out uh, as well. Substitute where it says DGS uh, with DOT. So similar to what we're dealing with here. Just wanted to note that. Thank you, thank you, Councilman. Um, I want to give folks an opportunity. Are there any questions about the two amendments lined out here, as explained by both DOT and the law department? Mr. Chair, I have a question. Councilman Ramos. Um, the so the um, whatever it takes to transfer between agencies has been completed. Because I'm I have a situation in my district where it's taken a long time for the transfer from DPW to uh, uh, DGS or excuse me DOT to DGS to DPW. It just takes forever, and so I just want to make sure that that's already completed. And then this is just uh, these changes in the amendments are just to reflect that. So I'm not familiar specifically with what uh, you're talking about, Councilwoman, but really these amendments are are for something that's already completed. And what that already completed thing is, is right of way division, the city's right of way office has formally been placed under the umbrella of Baltimore City DOT. Uh, previously, it was under DPW, and before that, it was under Department of General Services. So it's um, this is just updating the language to reflect that, that uh, right of way division is within transportation. So, but the 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 main the actual maintenance. So, like if I go on Code Map, which I can do right now, and look this up, is it's going to say DOT is responsible for maintenance? It's an alley. So it might just come up as nothing, um, but in theory, uh, if it were like a, you know, if, if it's a, you know, public right of way, yeah, that's 
that's definitely ours. Ali, the, this has nothing, the legislation itself isn't really determining, or the amendments aren't determining which agency controls, you know, what parcel essentially. Um, the opening and closing of alleys has always kind of been managed under the right-of-way division. These amendments are just saying right-of-way division is in fact under DOT. That, that's right. Okay, so it's not really, you know, who is responsible for maintenance actually is the one that's doing the right of way, the closing. It's actually DOT doing the closing. Okay, I got it. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Any other questions uh, about the amendments before we go into public testimony? Uh, uh, Liam, if you could take down the the amendments. All right, just make sure there are no questions here. I don't see any hands. All right, we're gonna go into public testimony. Are there any hands raised? There are no hands raised. All right, and any callers? David Fram, I'll unmute him. All right, David, you have Chairman me Conway. Oh, Chairman Conway, good afternoon. I just wanted to sort of elaborate on what Liam, um, what, what Liam had addressed to Councilwoman Ramos. So Councilwoman Ramos, when we put the bill forth to close the streets and alleys for the proposed Cab Calloway Park, we used, it was a Word document that we put language into, and I, I will take the blame on this one. We did not catch the error of public works but the, the Department of Transportation controls and oversees the closing of streets and alleys. Um, as for the, if, if it's property in your district, you may certainly call me if we need to transfer property between a different agency. And if, if we've fallen behind on that, I'll certainly assist you as much as I can. Um, but as for the closing bill, this is, um, I believe this is for the Cab Calloway Park. The Department of Planning has received a grant and is working with Recreation and Parks in conjunction to make this into a really neat area for the neighborhood. And this, these closed streets and alleys will allow the park to flourish and, and, and use it to its full potential. And, and that's all. Thank you. I appreciate that clarity. And I will give you a call. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, and David. That's all I have, Chairman. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. All right. Any other calls? <laughs> Is that okay? <laughs> Chairman Conway, there's one Tell other call. Me, Scott Weaver. <laughs> uh, Scott Weaver. Uh, that, is not my, that is not me. So I, I, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chairman. That, that, no, that, I that, wasn't you know, planning. <laughs> not me. Uh, no. Uh, uh, we have no comment. I have no comments. Thank you. What, what's your what was your question? Um, can you, Jennifer? Can you mute the person who's talking? Awesome. Thank you. Um, any other callers on the line? No other callers. All right. Excellent. That'll conclude public testimony. Um, and to that end, we will, uh, are there any other questions from the committee before we move to, uh, before we open for a motion to accept the amendment, no, the, the two amendments? All right, no questions. I'll accept a motion to. Uh, move amend the amendment that. favorable. Thank you. Um, Second. Moved by Dorsey, seconded by Ramos. Um, Chair Middleton is absent. Um, Bullock? Aye. Conway, yes. Dorsey? Yes, Mr. Chair. I believe we can also just do a voice vote on the amendment. We're halfway through now, so we'll just go and, and finish up. Um, Glover? Yes. Ramos? Yes. And Stokes? Yes. All right, the bill, the amendments pass, and I entertain a motion to um, move it favorable with amendments. 
Was the bill favorable with amendments? Thank you, Councilwoman Ramos. Do we have a second? Second. Second. Seconded by Glover. Um, Bullock. Councilman Bullock. Yes. Excellent. Conway, yes. Dorsey. Only if you can get me that music back. Well, we got one more bill. We might get it again. All right, yes. <laughs> uh, Glover. Yes, sir. Yes. Ramos. Yes. And Stokes. Councilman Stokes. Yes. Excellent. Thank you. All right. The bill passes unanimously uh, and it moves to second reader. And we'll move to our third and final bill, which is Bill 21-0100, City Property Grant of Easements, for the purpose of authorizing the Mayor and City Council of Baltimore to grant two perpetual easements to the Maryland State Highway Administration for the maintenance of two stormwater drainage inlets along Delaney Valley Road through the property of the Lock Raven Res Reservoir in Baltimore County, Maryland, as shown in Platt 6153, 61536, filled in the State Highway Administration State Roads Commission and providing for a special effective date. This bill was introduced on July 19, 2021, and it was sponsored by the Council President at the request of the administration, specifically uh, the Department of Transportation. Any questions about the bill before we move forward? All right, um, we'll move on to agency reports, starting with the city solicitor's office. Uh, anyone from the law department can speak to the bill. Did we lose somebody? Mr. Chair, it looks like uh, Hillary Rowley was uh, an attendee. I see Hillary there now. Can you hear me now? Yep, we can Great. hear you. Uh, yes, we approve the bill for form and legal sufficiency. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, Hillary. Next, we've got the Department of Transportation. Mr. Chair, this is a, it's a pretty unique bill. Um, so this is out in Baltimore County. Um, this part of Baltimore County, Delaney Valley Road, goes through um, Baltimore City property at Lock Raven Reservoir. So just as a reminder, the city owns thousands and thousands of acres outside of city limits. Um, most of it, to my knowledge, is water department related. Um, so anytime property that is under the designation of a city agency um, anytime that a city agency controlled property has to go through some sort of real estate agreement or selling of land or easement, those are managed by DOT's right of way division, which is why this is a DOT bill. Um, and long story short is SHA is requesting state highway administration is requesting, um, these little easements so they can put in some additional stormwater infra infrastructure. And the uh, location is somewhere between Timonium Road and I believe Old Bosley. So there's a stretch within there where these stormwater uh, um, easements would go. So that is the, the bill and the long and short of it. And DOT stands by its report, which is support. Excellent, thank you, Liam. Uh, next up, we've got the Parking Authority of Baltimore City. Good afternoon, committee members. This is Brett Thorne with the Parking Authority. We do not oppose passage of the bill. Thank you, Brett. Uh, next, we got the Department of Finance. Good afternoon, Mara James for the Department of Finance. Uh, we stand by our report. We do not oppose this legislation. Thank you. Thank you, Mara. Uh, next, we got the Department of Housing and Community Development. Thank you again, Mr. Chair, Stephanie Murdoch, Legislative Liaison for DHCD. We stand by our bill report. We defer to the Department of Transportation. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Stephanie. 
Uh, next, we've got the Department of Planning. Uh, planning has no objection and defers to DOT. All right, thank you. Uh, next, the Department of Real Estate. Uh, good afternoon, Ms. Chair and members of the committee. Casey Kelleher reporting for the Department of Real Estate. Um, we stand by our report um, as no objection deferring to the Department of Real Estate. Thank you. I mean, Depart thank sorry, you, Department of Transportation. All right, thank you, Casey. Um, I want to give a shout out to Mara for becoming a mom. Congratulations. Welcome back. It's been a while since we saw you. Um, I want to move uh, move there thereafter to uh, questions from committee members. Any questions about this bill? Uh, Councilmember Ramos. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I know that the any uh, my understanding is that the um, property that we own up in Baltimore County is they're directly related to our water system. So they're putting in Maryland Highway Administration um, because this particular highway is, you know, we don't have Maryland Highway in the city. So, you know, they um, do the work in other places and they're putting in stormwater inlets. And I'm wondering, have we done the study? I would assume so, I hope so, that says, you know, the stormwater is actually going to a stormwater drain and not into our water system. It's a great question, uh, Councilwoman. Um, I may have to defer, I don't know if David is on this call, but I believe, or I think David has been elevated, thankfully. Um, but I believe what would what would end up needing to be installed would in all likelihood have to be approved by MDE. Is that correct, David? Um, honestly, um, Councilwoman and, and the Honorable Chairman Conway, so this is a companion bill. The two inlets that if the committee agrees to move the bill forward that are going to be granted, they're a companion to a bill that was approved in the last session. So the the bill that was approved last session had the stormwater pipes that Councilwoman Ramos is asking about, but the State Highway Administration identified two other locations for inlets. So in answer, so the short and sweet of it is, Councilwoman, is the two inlets will be collecting rainwater off of Delaney Valley Road and then going into a stormwater pipe that was approved in a council bill from last session. And so that that uh, pipe, I guess, has been installed now and they just decided that there's some flooding in this other area and they wanna make sure that there's an inlet there so that that stormwater doesn't go into our water. Is that what they're saying? I, exactly. It's. A little bit more detailed than that. It's a little bit too far away to go into the into Lock Raven. It's more of a ponding issue that if the rainwater wasn't directed to the inlets, it could possibly sit on the road and collect. And heaven forbid, if there's a freeze thaw, it'll freeze and cause um, could cause some accidents. So we don't own the road. We own the the land adjacent on both sides to where the um, inlet is supposed to be. Yes. Okay, because the plat that I see just has the road and the two inlets. Um, I'd, I'd like to be able to kind of see geographically where it is, you know, related to the land that we that we actually own. The the description that I read was it is between Timonium and Old Bosley. And I know that that's kind of a wide swath of land, but that does narrow it down a little bit. Yeah, well, for those of us who have stayed in our little 14th district bubble for 18 months, it would be great to get a uh, map of some sort to see it. Um, and because uh, I'm just curious kind of where we own and then, you know, State Highway has um, just the one highway. I think that's pretty interesting. And then if someone could refer to me to the old bill, that would be great too. Of course. Mr. Chair. Hey. 
uh, Councilman Dorsey. Yeah, yeah. Uh, to Councilman Ramos, um, I think you probably want to talk to DPW about this. I'm virtually certain that all of the stormwater in this area does go into our um, drinking water impounds. Anything that's in the stormwater catchment area is part of that. Um, the the uh, what do you call it? The the watershed. Here we go. I got a little bit more of that. But, you know, I come from. I come for what I come for. Um, but I mean, if it's within the watershed area, which this absolutely is, uh, being north of Lock Raven like that, um, it that that water is definitely flowing into our um, Lock Raven impound, uh, whether by groundwater or by stormwater systems. I'm virtually certain of it. We basically drink. Baltimore County's stormwater. At the end of the day, we are processing and drinking Baltimore County and Carroll County and part of Harford County's stormwater that runs off of their streets. No, I, and I appreciate that. I guess I was just uh, making sure that like the trash that goes with stormwater doesn't go into, you know what I mean? That's that's where I was headed with that. Uh, not to interrupt everybody, but I do have the bill from the previous term, and that's Council Bill 16-0649. So that actually predates the previous term, but was two terms ago. All right. Uh, any, you guys want to dig a little more on that? Any further questions to that end or? Uh, and maybe David. We don't have any. Answer. We don't have a bill report from DOT. Uh, excuse me, DPW on this, or even anybody from Maryland Highway, do we? No, they were not referred. No. No, no, they, they weren't referred for this bill. Is this time sensitive, Mr. Chair? Or Mr. Fram? I know, uh, Mr. Davis, Liam, is this time sensitive or Mr. Fram? I think ideally we would get, get this through to address the puddling issue because it sounds hazardous. Um, so in that sense, it is time sensitive. One moment, folks. We can, uh, would it be possible to work uh, with DPW and SHA to get some additional items ahead of the next council meeting before second reader vote? Yeah, I think that makes sense. I have questions. We so, yeah, I mean, I, I get where we're coming from. Um, I, that's why I was asking if this was time sensitive. I mean, it's. Uh, Given that there's a potentially hazardous situation there at, at that location that needs the, you know, it's, which is why well, that storm. It sounds storm like water. there's been a, it's been the, the same situation for years and years, and they're finally actually addressing it. So um, I don't want anybody to slide on the ice, um, but it sounds like they've been having this problem and are finally doing something about it. Question, um, and I'm not sure, uh, David or Liam, if you know, are, is there any funding attached attached to this? It's none of it would be city funds. None of it city funds. Yeah. And is any of that funding state funding likely time bound? I don't know that off the top of my head. <clears throat> okay. Uh, I think I feel more comfortable holding off on this and allowing us to come back. Uh, Jennifer, how do you how do you how do you think that works if uh, Chair Middleton 
uh, Vice President Milton can come back and finish this one off. I don't want to rush through this. And I, if we could get GPW um, to the next work session, that would be really helpful. And possibly the Maryland Highway, since they're asking for this. Okay. I know that they're not compelled to, right. but it would be yeah. great. All right. So what what we're gonna do? Um, we're gonna we're gonna come back to this, and um, we can work with the committee uh, and Vice President Middleton to get this scheduled before the next council hearing. Uh, and we can make sure to get that information back in advance. So we'll we'll revisit this and, and not vote on this out, this one out today. Councilman Dorsey, you have your hand raised. Yeah, I I would ask that we maybe reconsider and just try to move this bill forward. We're trying to give the the bill is seeking to give the just the right to maintain this to the state, and it says right in the bill that any uh, any construction has to be approved by the city of Baltimore before it happens. We're just giving them the right to maintain it. It says right in the bill that we maintain kind of a final say on what they're building. So if I'm reading this correctly, there's already the storm drains there and we're just getting them, giving them opportunity Connected. to maintain it. I mean, that was what was in the summary that I read, but it also says that if anything is being constructed, it has to get our approval. And and that would be uh, advised overseen by DOT. Is that correct? I, imagine, I, I believe since it's on DPW property, they would have jurisdiction over approving, approving the plans once the easement is executed. That sounds correct to me okay. as well. Okay. Right. In this bill, uh, it just says the city. It doesn't say DPW. Well, it's the property is controlled by DPW. So, I mean, whenever something's done on a property that's owned by agency, it, that agency has to, you know, approve it, whether it's through a right of entry agreement or, you know, an easement like this. Mr. Chair, I have a question. I know the so, chairwoman is not here. What are we going to do with this? Because the chairwoman not here, and are we going to recess it till the chairwoman comes back? Or what's going on? I'm a little confused. What are we doing? So, Councilman Stokes, I think we're trying to figure that out now. And I think what I'm understanding from the bill is that uh, we still have the the authority to determine what can be built there. And I think Councilman, excuse me, Councilwoman uh, Ramos's concern is that um, how we, she's concerned about how we manage the stormwater. And it seems that we have the ability to manage that, which is what Councilman Dorsey just brought up. Uh, my initial inclination was to hold off. I think we're trying to figure out whether or not that is the wisest decision. Um, let's do this. Let's continue here through uh, before we move on. Are there any other questions about the bill? All right, we're going to uh, move to public testimony. Um, and let's see, are there any hands raised at the moment? There are no hands raised and um, Dave, uh, David Fram is the only caller. Okay. And David has already spoken, but uh, if there's any additional insight that David can okay. add to this. Uh, Chairman Conway, sir, I have, I have nothing further to add. Okay, thank you. Um, so I, I guess the-, the Mr. Is, Chair, I think that um, if you don't mind, I, I mean, it, um, I do have a lot of questions, but I don't know that it's actually relevant to the bill. So if, um, because I think, I'm, I, just trying to learn about all of that around us. And I don't think we've had a proper briefing about, you know, all of the things that um, are happening around Lock Raven Reservoir and all of that related to our water system, which was one of the questions we just asked DPW in that series of questions. So uh, that we sent them. Um, so, cause that context would help me with this. Um, but I think, you know, it's however you want to do it is fine with me. I'll continue to ask those questions and we can try to um, get the answers 
about how all that how all that works. Um, you know, what does maintenance mean? I think the councilman is, you know, looking at the bill and the summaries. It's just you know giving permission for them to do, but everything still has to come through us anyway. So I don't really know why the bill is even needed. But um, so there's. Anyway, it would be nice that if we had DPW here and others uh, to talk about all of this sort of big picture stuff related to all of that. that. That's all. And if we have to do that in a separate setting, but still move the bill again, I just don't know if it's time sensitive or not. Yeah, I think um, re reading through the analysis here, it looks like we still have the ability to control what would be built there, how it's structured. And I mean, your, your questions are great questions. Um, I think it's a little bit aside from the point of the bill, but still great questions. And I think it'd be helpful to have answers to those. That said, I think um, we do have enough, uh, and I think enough protection potentially, um, enough protection to move forward, I think. And so I guess the question is, Councilman Dorsey, would you want to make that a motion? Yeah, I'd like to make a motion to move the bill favorable, but I do want to just make a comment. I spent a lot of time last term digging into what in the world goes on at Lock Raven and Pretty Boy and all these places that the city owns and where really critical infrastructure exists and really critical parts of our way of life originate um, that so rarely get any critical attention because it's not in my city council district. It's not in somebody else's city council district. It's not, and it's and it's not owned by the county council members whose council districts it in. Uh, they just want their residents to be able to go and tread trails through our reservoir. Right. Um, you, you, we have, there are a lot of really critical conversations to be had uh, about these things, and. I, for one, would love to share the, I feel like the wealth of information that I gained over the last term and would certainly love to not be the only person banging that drum um, as I felt I Sounds was. Like a last term. So uh, I'm glad to have a, a separate conversation uh, to give kind of what I feel is the lay of the land there and then maybe figure out what we can do collectively to take up greater concerns. With that, I move the bill favorable. Thank you, Councilman Dorsey. We have a motion on the floor. Do you have a second? Second by Glover. Seconded by Councilman Glover. Excellent. Uh, roll call. We're going to move favorable. Um, Councilman Bullock? Yes. Conway, yes. Councilman Dorsey? Yes. Glover? Yes. Ramos? Yes, can I explain my vote? Yes. Um, I want to uh, thank my uh, colleague from the third. I definitely will take you up on that, and maybe it's worth actually a larger hearing um, about uh, that relationship. Um, because we're not giving a lot of attention up there and I think it deserves a lot of attention. Um, I, I have a lot of questions um, and this bill just sparked all those questions back up. So, um, you know, with that said, um, I, you know, happy to work with the councilman on on that, but also maybe even bring it to a larger um, hearing. So um, thank you, Mr. Chair. I vote yes. Thank you, Councilman Ramos. And finally, Councilman Stokes. Yes. Thank you. This bill passes and will be read for second reader at our next council meeting. Um, I want to thank you all, one, for navigating that sort of awkward situation, but um, two, I, I agree, Councilman Dorsey, that this is having these uh, properties out in no man's land, I think is something that um, it is our responsibility to be on top of this. So we should ask all these questions. And I think great questions by Councilwoman Ramos. Um, Yes, I'm, I look forward to having that discussion later on. If, if I may, Mr. Chair, I just want to thank the committee for their trust uh, in, in DOT and our fellow city agencies in advancing the bills today. And uh, I will make myself available, Councilwoman Ramos, to uh, any questions or concerns or conversation that you would like to have. It's certainly an interesting topic, um, you know, looking at the city's regional presence. Uh, a lot of it ties to our regional water utility 
but there's even some other historic, you know, additional caveats in there. So thanks again to everybody. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you, Liam. Um, thank everyone for attending and have a great day.